Ahoy, Couch Cruisers, it's Captain C, and we are here to talk about all of these MSC developments. I know I have not talked to some of y'all in a while. Um, MSC has been dropping some bombs lately about some of the developments, major developments for its newest ship, as they are, according to them on Instagram this morning, a year out from uh, launching MSC World America. And it's just been so much talk going on. Of course, uh, the the social media campaign that's rolled out. So baby, I had to put the cap back on, put the red lip back on. I got to make sure I don't put nothing on my teeth. <laughs> and let's talk about all things MSC. Are they making the moves needed to bust the hole wide open into this U.S. cruise market? Let's get into this chat. Say hello. Um, Y'all, it's so important. I have some slides. We're going to hope things don't buffer. I got some media. Um, and of course, I got my notes. <laughs> So welcome in chat. This is the Lunchtime Live special for ca the Couch Cruisers. And we're talking about, is MSC making moves? All right. Welcome in eight people. Let's get into the chat. Edward Strand, who, Uncle Eddie, I am so looking forward to your uh, take on this as you are an MSC connoisseur, MSC cruiser. You love the MSC brand and has have experienced it in a few cruises. So we'll love your feedback on some of these topics. Who else we got here? MH Family Adventures. Bust the internet wide open with their reel yesterday. As you know, there's a social media campaign going on uh, where MSC has invited a variety of creators for their submission to, you know, have their reaction. And we're going to talk about exactly what were the creators reacting to. However, um, if you check out MSC Family Adventures reel on um, Instagram, I think I also saw it on Facebook. Uh, make sure you get a like so that MSC knows that, you know, there are some creators out here who they should be following and get on that ship to give their perspective. So welcome to Animation Family Adventures. I'm excited you're in here um, and looking forward to your perspective too. Uh, we got Kristen H in here. Welcome in Kristen H. She's saying good afternoon. And Edward says, I've already have our World America booked and he's going October 2025. Awesome. Uncle Eddie, we have something in common. I also have MSC World America booked. It was a great deal. I got that ship for a thousand dollars or so for the inaugural sailing. So, hey, MSC, this is my submission <laughs> to your social media campaign to talk about our reactions to some of the things that are rolling out on MSC. Uh, so that's exciting to see that you'll be on World America and looking forward to that perspective. We have the solo cruises in the house. So looking forward to your perspective. Hey, we got a variety of people in here. So I might have to, this might be one of the lives where I'm gonna have to share the link to get some of your live reactions as well. Uh, and greetings if you all are in here. My name is Carlene. Uh, I, I am the personality behind the channel COFC. However, I also do couch cruising where if we're not on the high seas, we are reading all of the things, looking at all the media moments um, and talking about these ships. So welcome in. And today we are talking about MSC um, and some of its rollout, some of its big announcements. We saw a really big announcement. Okay, let me get into, I wanna, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I want to get into the chat. I want to get into the announcements. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more. Let's see if I can get to the bottom of the chat with hellos first. So let's do proper greetings. <laughs> Focus, Carly. <laughs> proper greetings. So, Sigda Solo Cruz is saying hello. Keisha H is saying, hey, hey, Keisha H, we got a wrench. The wrenches are in the building, y'all. So be on your best behavior. But let's debate. Let's chat. Uh, uh, Margaret Logan is here saying, hey, welcome channel member Margaret Logan saying good afternoon or morning, depending where you are. Folks are speaking. We got Phil and D's travel spree in the house. Welcome in Phil and D. You all have an MSC ship coming your way as MSC Seascape is heading to Galveston. Although I know you all have already been on it. Focus are speaking. Uh, Ink Spill Travels, another channel member is in here saying, hey, gal. Hey, Ink Spill, welcome in. Uh, and Parks on the Go is here. Welcome in, POTG. Parks on the Go also had a series of MSC. And will we convince Parks on the Go to give it another try? Or will they be interested in giving another try as this, this big MSC ship rolls into North America? We shall see. Because it, it, MSC is just such an interesting brand where people either had a really great time or a really not so great time. Um, um, so it'll be interesting to see what adjustments they make to the U.S. market. And I think I've gotten to the end of the chat. Oh, MH Family Adventures, uh, see you on board the inaugural COSC. Yes, but we are trying to get MH Family Adventures on that initial rollout because it's interesting. They said uh, this were a year out. Now, I'm not sure if they, because I know the initial selling is on April 12th. So uh, we're trying to get make sure that they get their, you all to get a chance of previewing. Uh, so make sure you all hit that reel. And I actually, I challenge all of you smaller channels who weren't invited by MSC 
do your own reaction video to their um, post. Uh oh, the friends are, uh, <laughs> my friend group is uh, texting. Hopefully, we don't get a whole lot of binging. I, I apologize. All right, let's get into the verse. Welcome, 18 people. Carlene, see what see here. Uh, and we are couch cruising all these MSC rollouts. Okay, let's get into the big, the first big announcement, which I think shook. A lot of you think you carnival, uh, I don't know what you call the carnival, the fun ship people. <laughs> um, so let's see. And I apologize to the buffers. I'm going to not share, show myself. Hopefully I do this right. Okay. I got, uh, let's see, present. So, oh, I should have uploaded. Oh, wait. Huh? Sorry, I should do this earlier, shouldn't I? We got slides, just one second. They are prepared, but I just realized there's an integration here with StreamYard that might make this a little more smooth. Oh yeah. Look at me being tech savvy. Hello, 18 or 20 people. It's processing. All right, add into the stage. Boom, pow. Here we go. Let's see. Um, uh, let's, oh, here, I'm gonna just put images climate. So, some of you all know uh, that the internet was bust wide open yesterday as Reverend Dr. E, who was a carnival favorite. I don't know if I can do this. Hopefully I don't buffer. If I buffer, somebody let me know in the chat. Um, Reverend Dr. E, who was a carnival favorite, he used to be on Carnival Conquest. I actually had a selling book with him um, in the middle of the pandemic. And it was one of those moments that like we didn't know the thing pandemic would not stop. <laughs> Um, and so I ended up having a cruise with my cousins on Carnival Conquest canceled. And I feel like I've just been traveling, trying to chase him down, trying to get on shit with him. However, he just made a big announcement. And this was interesting because actually somebody in Melanie C Facebook group, which is a Facebook group for cruisers of color or anybody who um, is allies of cruisers of color, um, uh, was somebody on Melanie C actually broke this one. Um, she was on a Magnifica about a week and a half ago. And um, she was like, Reverend Dr. E is on here. And then somebody was like, girl, I don't know what she's talking about. And then here's what we got yesterday. One second. Let me see if I can uh -uh, go back. Let's see if I can do both. Let's see if I can control click. Uh-oh, hold on. We may have to come out of this. Sorry, we're working on the tech part. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing so you all can see it. Let's see. Uh, stop. Wait, wait, one second. One second. I don't want to stop presenting. I want to... Um, because it won't let me click the link. Okay, let's get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Exit full screen. All right, I'm going to stop sharing so that you all can... Okay, how do I stop sharing? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I don't want to remove... Okay, can you hear me now? I hope so. And we're going to do... I think we're going to do... Shoot. We're going to do this. Bear with me, guys. I'm just going to have to share the screen. I'm going to have to share this one. I was doing all the tech support. Boom. There we go. Don't want to see that. Bop. Okay. Put you on pause. Appreciate y'all for hanging in there. We want this window. Oh, we don't want this. We want this window. There we go. Share you. Okay, let me turn the sound up and boom. I was thinking maybe it's been long enough, right? Perhaps I should return to the sea. Maybe. Maybe a messy. What do you think? Bust the internet wide, wide open. Hope can y'all still hear me? <laughs> Bust the internet wide open. I don't want to mute. Hello. Okay, cool. Great. You all can still hear me. Bust the internet wide open. Let's get back in the chat. So what are y'all thinking? I have a conspiracy theory for this already. All right. So I'm going to tell y'all my conspiracy theory once I get into the chat. So what do y'all think? Reverend Dr. E is now on MSC Magnifica. Uh, so MH Family Adventures was saying, hey, 23 people, say thank y'all for standing there during the tech issue. Uh, Inksville is saying, hey, okay, folks are saying, hey, oh, Miss Deb, thank you for joining us. Uh, Parker's on the go says, you are not convincing them just yet, but we shall see. Uh, this is a new name, Mommy Budget Nista, welcome in, welcome in. 
uh, ink spills travel saying, when is the inaugural? So the inaugural is April 12, 2020, 2025. So MSC has done their beginning countdown. They're starting to do a lot of rollouts. Um, I'm going to cover a lot of information that they've shared within the last week. However, I think this Reverend Dr. E thing is huge, bringing one of Carnival's former favorite personalities into um, MSC. And he said he's not going to be there long. He says um, he's going to be there till the end of June 2025. Maybe he he's also has trained even Carnival cruise directors. So I'm not sure if maybe he's taken in the culture of MSC and will work on, you know, the bigger bag, which is being a trainer versus just being the cruise director, no shade, but, you know, curious if that's the thing of, you know, he's going to learn the culture of MSC, give his perspective, and then, you know, train their directors, we shall see. Or will he be my conspiracy, which my current conspiracy theory is, will we see Reverend Dr. E on this big behind ship come April next year? However, there usually are going to be, it seems like they're going to be some preview events. So there's currently a social media campaign that um, I know MH Family Adventures has did their submission. I've seen a submission by Jen Danielle. It seems like MSC is working on picking some content creators to be on their initial uh, selling. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so uh, folks are speaking. Oh, I'm saying so MH Family Adventures says, yes, we'll be on the preview naming before the inaugural as well. So, yep. So they are officially a year out. And uh, Rockwell, how how long is that cruise? Because the inaugural is April 12th. They're saying that, is it a two-day cruise or is it going to be away earlier? And then, yes, 2025. So you have time to get your coins ready. I got the, tr I booked this. I don't remember when I booked it. I got my receipt over here. <laughs> uh, but when I booked it, it was, a, I think, $1,000. I have like $800 left to pay. I don't have any perks. I just got a little onboard credit. Um, but yeah. Uh, MH Family of Interest says the preview cruise naming is April 9th. There you go. So you get a cute little three, four day cruise before uh, the the regular folks get on it. So, hey, MSC, you know, you, you might want solo cruising your girl, your solo cruising girl, Captain C on board to give that solo cruise perspective. Um, but that's awesome. MH Family Ventures will be on World America. Uh, and we got Fast and Treat in the building. Who else we got here? Keisha H is saying, yay, yes. We are clapping for all the things that MH Family Adventure, all the good things that they're doing. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Edward Strand says they got a new DJ. Who's a new DJ? Spill the beans. Where where are they from? Uh, are they from like a major nightclub? What's going on with the new DJ? Tell us. We Again, this is, we are not Cruise 101 over here. Crouch Cruises are deep into the information. So, uh, okay, we got our first comment from MH Family Adventures about Dr. E. She says, I think Dr. E is going to change the game for MSC, a good move for MSC. Absolutely, because you had so many carnival folks who had not had the opportunity to sell with him. I know he had did some reality TV stuff on Netflix, um, but, you know, he kind of had almost similar, you know, a little like, his exit was very similar to Cookie. Like everybody thought everything was great and then he was gone, you know? And then when he was gone, everybody, like a lot of, there are people who actually sell ships for the cruise director because the cruise director actually makes the experience that good. And Reverend Dr. E was definitely it for Carnival. Uh, that was interesting to have him pull him on board. Uh, cool. Who else we got here? Folks that can hear me. Uh, Parker's on the go says, Dr. E may even change their mind. Welcome in 24 people. But it's a marketing ploy in my mind. They know they got to change 100% for the American market. But based, that's based on their experience. And I think that's been based on a lot of folks' experiences. Um, Parker's on the go. Like in my, Americans have just a different standard of customer service or expectation, excuse me, for customer service than a European market. Like when you go to like restaurants in Europe, they already tip their workers. So they don't have like a need to like, you know, go above beyond, do backflips across the floor to give you good service. Whereas Americans, we are expecting a whole lot of customer service on, um, you know, pennies and dimes, <laughs> um, which I think, and, it, and it's our kind of mantra. If we spend money, we want our money to go as far as it can go. So MSC is going to have to adjust, even like some small stuff. Um, what ship was I on? I was on Celebrity Ascent. I was getting my nails done in the spa. 
And um, the lady who was helping me was asking me what other what lines I had been on. And she was giving me the employee perspective. And, um, you know, she was like, oh, yeah, because I had did three cruises back to back at that time. And I would say, you know, my next one was going to be Virgin. And she was like, yeah, I heard they treat their people nicely. And then she was like, basically, and this is not me, y'all. This is the lady who was working in the spa. She was like, MSC gets the leftovers. Now, I'm not saying that's true. Uh, or what. However, that is the rumor that is going through the cruise industry, even when uh, uh, employees are picking certain cruise lines. So MSC is going to have to work on changing that narrative. Um, it seems like they're going to try to start. I know Dr. E has trained Carnival Cruise directors, so it will be interesting to see, will he be the face of, you know, MSC, like, don't just have us out here entertaining the people, give him the bag of training, even your cruise directors for this big rollout that you are doing in the U.S. So thank you, Progress, for that information. Uh, no worries. Miss Miss Didi in chat says, which MSC ships will he be on? Great question, Miss Didi25. Uh, currently, Reverend Dr. E will be on um, the MSC Magnifica, and he said in his post, he you can expect him there through um, June, the end of June this year. I even priced it. Like I, I was sitting here yesterday, I was talking to Sig via text, and I had already priced um, a couple of cruises. Um, and I will say they're all like they're three day cruises. I think on MSC Magnifica excuse me, on MSC Magnifica. Um, and I had already priced a couple of dates to see what will work with my schedule. But you have, if you want to catch Reverend Dr. E with his MSC flair, and I know um, there have been people who already got pictures with him um, on the Magnifica, uh, you have until the end of June to have your opportunity to sell with Dr. E if you haven't. So that's our first big announcement. I'm going to go into the comments and then we're going to get back into what was the next major thing that uh, MSC rolled out, which this one had the people flying high. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, MH Family Adventure says the preview is April 9th through the 12th. Awesome. Thank you for those dates. Uh, so that's cool to look out for. Miss Penny says, happy hump day. Listening while I work. Enjoy some noonday happy news. Well, I try to bring, you know, some, some interesting news to you. MSC has been doing a lot of rollouts um, as they prepare to bring in the World America ship. Um, hey, POTG, they won't have the white meat on the world America. All right, Uncle Eddie <laughs> is what Uncle Eddie says. And Keisha H is saying, Miss D, oh, so they're speaking. Oh, thank you, MH Family Mentor saying, hit that like button. Okay, let's get back into the presentation. I'm debating if I want to present or share. It just seemed a little easier to hop screens. Uh, let's see. So the next thing had everybody sending these reels going back and forth. Um, and they were talking about some of the, I guess, jaw dropping features of the MSC World America. Let's get into this right, right quick. Let's see. Um, oh, I know what I want to do. Let me tee it up. This is what we'll do. We'll tee up the link and get you ready here. One second. Let's get you going on this side. Let me pause you for the cause. Okay, now we're going to share my apologies if we start buffering, but uh, this was the next major announcement that dropped yesterday. Now, MSC asked the content creator girls what were their first reactions. And my first reaction was like, ain't nobody asked for that, MSC. Ain't nobody asked for no cliffhang situation off the side of the ship. However, what I want to do is I want to get deeper into this visual because it actually, that just shows us this random Voyager and Voyage-esque red swing. But I think it gives us some little content and Easter eggs about what might actually be on this adventure zone of the ship. But let me get into the comments. I see the comments look a little thick. So I uh, like y'all have something to say. All right. Uh, uh, Parks of the Ghost says, listen, we want to see the change. Based on the experiences of a lot of people in our comments, it seems that we want to love them, but we don't want to spend our money. Um, gotcha. <laughs> 
Uh, Edward says, from my experience, MSC workers like every other cruise industry out there are, are like every other cruise industry out there. First day, I tip the bartenders, never had any issues. When going back for a refill, they even give you a look for refills. And actually, I will say, let me get this off my chin. I will say it, I have not had an issue with the bartenders. I've had, a well, okay, let's go into a couple things, right? First off, this World America ship, um, I need MSC not to just give us a big, glorious ship, but give us a big, A, give us a big, glorious ship with personality. So meaning um, I've sailed MSC twice. I sell MSC, MSC Maravilla out of New York, and I sell MSC Seascape. And while Seascape was the bigger, prettier ship, Maravilla had more personality. So I don't, I don't want MSC just to give us big, beautiful spaces. I want MSC to give us memories and meaning. And I will say I prefer Maravilla's adult-only stadium seating. If I can get a plug, if anybody's listening and cares what the solo cruise girl wants to say and hear or do. Um, I love MSC Maravilla's stadium adult-only seating in the two pools versus how they did the shallow waiting pool in the back of Seascape. So if we can fix that before April 12th, I will love it. But anywho, you know, I know it's above my pay grade. I'm just a couch cruise captain with a $15 hat, okay? Um, but anyway, um, MSC bartenders. Okay, like, yes, you want to tip your bartenders. But the other areas of service that I need, like MSC, for instance, when I was on a Seascape uh, Thanksgiving, my cabin had, and I know like it, it would take an attendant who was very attentive, but my cabin had toenails. And as a creator, I'm always very like, I always pick what I want to film and what I don't want to film. Like I even watched when I was on a Parker's on a go with their group cruise a couple of weeks ago. It was funny because there was a situation with some food in the buffet and I was kind of like, okay, what are they, how are they going to handle this situation as a creator? Are you going to turn the camera on and get the moment? Or are you just going to be like, you know, ship happens. <laughs> um, but like Maravilla, I, uh, not Maravilla, Seascape, I had like, there was like toenails by my nightstand. And if I've been down to see it, I'm like, well, dang, how did the cleaning staff miss it? So I was like, okay, not gonna make a big deal just to get back to my bathroom and see more toenails. So A, I'm kind of like, how many toes did the people who were in my cabin ahead of me have? Because Lord, there were toenails everywhere. But then also I'm like, you know, can we get some attentive att room attendants to like address those kind of things? Um, even the situation with um, not just, you know, the not just bartenders, but like the situation with Ben and David was in a managerial level. And that was basically poor training. And even Ben and David have done like a follow-up video basically saying that when they got on the phone with MSC, MSC was like, yeah, that should have been a non-factor. They should have never approached you. That's a training and a consistency issue. So they definitely need to hammer those kind of like inconsistencies and in service um, out immediately. Uh, but, you know, I think for the price point, they have an amazing price point. But however, which what, what, what you can't do for Americans is be like, well, oh, you only got this cruise for eight hundred dollars and you just got to deal with what we give you. Um, no. <laughs> um, so uh, Leanne Travel saying happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, Fox is going to say, hey, G Fox, welcome in. Uh, Leanne says, not on my bucket list. No, 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 no to the swing. Yeah, it felt, it just feels unnecessary. Um, I, I can see that swing getting old quick. Whereas Robotron, I, I kind of get Robotron, but I, yeah, the swing seems interesting. I was like, could we have thought, I mean, it's that they get the innovation factor, but there's also something I want to get back into the swing really quickly. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything major on the side. Let's talk about, there's some context clues behind this swing. So let me um, get to the slides really quick because I want us to look a little deeper about this swing situation. I got, I think we got some context clues here. Come on, technology. Oh, it's already up. Okay. So we see the girls swinging on the side of the ship. Okay. I think the first context clue, because we everybody that I know, hello, 30 people, welcome in. My name is Carlene. We are Couch Cruising, which is basically a community of people who are reading all the cruise news and talking about it. Um, and today we're going to talk about all of MSC's rollouts prior to their um, inaugural selling of World America, which will be in about a year. Um, so I think the first key factor that I, I pointed out, I've noticed in all of the videos, they are only showing 
the swing at Ocean K, Key, K, Key, whatever. Um, I'm wondering if this swing is only going to be functional Ocean Key, Ocean K, because if you have been there, you know that if you fall off, you can pretty much swim to the... <laughs> I'm being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. But I don't, I don't see them actually doing this swing uh, when they're out to sea. I think they might only do it in dock. That's my first hunch. I, I don't know if that's to be true, but you know, I like to, I like to pontificate. I like to, you know, theorize a little bit. However, what has also come, I see another, again, another picture here where they got Ocean K in the background and they're swinging. So I don't think it's going to be open up all the time, just maybe in port. So, you know, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. This is just me. This is not the facts. It's just me thinking about things. Um, let me pull this off really quick so you can see. I am, though, interested in, at first, I was like, is this a, that orange track thing? You see the bottom right picture, top right, and all that stuff down there behind? You can't see my arrow. I'm arrowing for my life. Ooh. Oh, oh, no, nope, don't. Okay, don't do, don't. Can I, don't, uh, I need to stop clicking buttons. <laughs> I tried, I found me a pencil, and I was about to go to work. Anywho, there is a, uh, a little, like, real, uh, what is it called, a track? There's a track right there. So at first I was like, are we going to get like a roller coaster? But I think it's giving like zip line and I think it's, excuse me, my T is sneaking up on me. I think it's giving zip line. I think it's going to be like some kind of adventure course here. So I found that interesting um, there. My biggest question is how do you mount this thing? Like how do I get up on the big swing to nowhere? Um, anywho. Uh, so I would say like, I appreciate them for the creativity. However, it's, it 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 did nothing for me. <laughs> and shout out to the content creators who created reaction videos to this because it was kind of lackluster. I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's my initial reaction. I am looking forward to the what else the ship has um, that will be unique to MSC. All right, let's get back into the chat. Uh, Kristen, what is that? <laughs> Oh, that must be the girls. Yes, girl. And I was just like, how many toes do these people have? Because the toenails were all over the cabin. And at first I was just kind of like, like, okay, maybe, you know, a quick turnaround or whatever. But then like, I just kept finding them like eat date. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I didn't, I decided not to like record anything, but it was just one of the things that I was just like another cruise line possibly would have saw these things and addressed it. Um, but I get, you know, those are tight turnarounds. Uncle Eddie says, nope. Um, <laughs> if you see something, say something. Yes, I need to do better with the see it in the saying. Uh, okay, Sig Cruiser was on MSC. If you all know Sig the Solo Cruiser, she has a series on MSC Magnifica. Um, so she has the, uh, you all are looking at Cruiser Reverend Dr. E, but you also want to see what this Magnifica ship looks like. Uh, follow Sig. She has a whole series out on the Magnifica. Sig says, my MSC experience on the Magnifica was positive, but I know others have different experience even on the same ship. There is no consistency. And I think that's what, like, despite the, you know, is the food good? Is the food not good? I had a great time. I had a terrible time. And I get that happens with all lines, but it just seems so polarizing on MSC. So I hope whatever they do when they come to the U.S. market, they establish consistency with their brand. Like we know there's going to be outlier moments, right? Um, but like we don't want, you know, that whole like it just seems like spikes and where it's like people have really great times and then somebody comes back and they're like, I had a really horrible time and I never want to go back again. Um, so it must see what, you know, you can take that point there that it like that SIG is pointing out about that consistency. Let's do that. Yeah. And I will say again, even, okay, let's take out the, the not so nice things, right? Um, MSC Maravilla and MSC Seascape for my, those are my two MSC cruises. I didn't have a terrible time on either. But it was just really um, two very inconsistent experiences. But I also know ships have different personalities. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's get that consistency factor down. Phil and D says they in there clipping feet <laughs> instead of. So you, Phil says it was probably, it might have been a room attendant. I don't know. But I just was like, I'm like, there felt like there were 25 to 30 toenails in my cabin. And I was just like, what was happening here? Um, Phil and D said they had a, see, 
Oh, okay. We had a woman's razor left in our shower on our last Royal Caribbean cruise. Yikes on bikes. Yeah. I mean, I get it. They're, they're making these turnarounds really quickly. I will say, you know, um, you, and I know you feel y'all are, you know, seasoned cruisers. So I'm not even talking to y'all about this one. But if you are new, a person who's newer to cruising um, and you go into your cabin and it's not up to par, let your room attendant know um, media, as you know, and just give them time to rectify the situation because they are literally, I mean, you have people who decide they don't want to leave their cabin anytime soon and I flip it, these, you know, 40 and hallways full. Like I talked to a room attendant on a carnival and he was like, I was just like, you know, Hey, you can clean my room, whatever time works for you. And he was like, yeah, he's like, the whole floor is mine. And I was like, great day. Like I don't even clean my own house, let alone cleaning like you imagine just you're you're running into people who are you know you have those cruisers who are very you know they, they're very tidy and you have people who are like you know balls to the wall they're on vacation and they ain't cleaning up nothing and they got pizza boxes and they're doing all kind of gross stuff in the cabin so just you know when you first get on don't let it ruin your experience tell your cabin a steward let guest services know Give them an opportunity to rectify the situation um, before you decide that like life is over. Um, so that's just my little bit of tip for the high 35 people, those who might be newer to cruising um, and just understand that those flips are on these ships are happening so fast. Uh, MH Family Adventure says, uh, MSC Magnifica was good for us, but the food wasn't our favorite. Now, that has been a consistent. I don't think MSC's food is anybody's favorite. Now, I don't, whoever Emerald's cousin is, maybe, MSC, talk to them since Carnival got Emerald on lock. Don't go talk to Royal Caribbean because they eat. Yeah, it can be as equally inconsistent. You might want to go talk to, I mean, I know they're celeb celebrity. I mean, they're royal celebrity are cousins. Something, I mean, I guess for the price point, you got, you know, I don't know, but that inconsistency in food, we got to get that a little more stable. Um, and MSC says, I mean, not MSC, MH Family Ventures is not consistent across their ships, but that's the case for all cruise lines. Yeah, that's the case. It's, I just feel like MSC gets that inconsistency thing a little more than others. Like, yeah. Uh, Parker's going to go since I'm a thrill seeker, but I ain't crazy. If I can do the zip line real, but I'm not doing that thing. So they, it's like they're going to have a zip line on this one. But yeah, the swing just feels like, I'm like, how do I mount this? I feel like I want one more piece of restraint for the swing. Something else. Uh, we're getting back into the swing. Let's, let me just show y'all the swing one more good time. Uh, um, Keisha H says, yes, say something at home, definitely on a cruise ship, hotel, anywhere, clean the room, please. Yes, it is your money. Please ask for, you know, request the level of service that you want. Alicia says, that seems scary. I just want to know, how do you get on said swing? Like, does it, does that part right here, like rotate back and you climb in the swing? And I just need more, something more than a lap bar in front of me. Um, Sig the Solo Cruiser says, I want to know the contingency plans these lines have in place for these thrill attractions. What happens when ship goes wrong, Sig? We want to know. We want to know for sure. So that I think that's a fair, very fair question. I honestly think they don't have a contingency plan. I think the contingency plan is you sign your life away when you get on said attraction and should something happens, it happens. Um, so, because I remember on Seascape, they had the um, Robotron. Seascape had the Robotron. And there was like a little podium that you had to do to do your, um, like the waiver before getting on Robotron. And then same for um, even the water slide area in MSC. It's another tip. If you do the, if you get on a ship that has water slides, um, the first time you go on the slides, you have to like do some paperwork and then you get a wristband for the rest of the cruise. But basically, they're basically on the sh the one I had, they're like, if you impale yourself, happy sliding. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Keisha H. Yes, hit that thumbs up button. We are talking all things today um, with the Couch Cruises about MSC's rollout of their newest ships uh, or newest ship, which is the World America. Somebody is, hold on, I got mentioned. Hold on, let me look at the phone because that means. Am I frozen? I don't know. Am I frozen? Um, Parsons and Ghost says, um, 
not them coming for everybody at one time. They said Americans like the thrills and we are going to give it to them. I don't know. I like the rest. Can we build up the Zen zone? So that's something else we're going to talk about in the, um, y'all would have to tell me in the chat phone because I can't look at my phone and look at the chat at the same time. So if I'm frozen or freezing or you can't hear me, um, let me know in the chat and I can probably catch it. Um, anywho, uh, but thank y'all. I appreciate it. Um, who else we got? Easy selling. Now we love, now it is jumping back and forth for some reason. Maybe I'll, what I'll do is let me stop sharing this and that might help with me pulling some of the, uh, me pulling too much bandwidth. I had, uh, I had YouTube running. Anywho, um, easy selling. We always love it. And easy selling comes in the chat because usually easy selling is giving us the cruise, uh, that senior level of cruising, uh, information. Easy selling says MSC knows it has service and diversity problems. They were happy ignoring it, but someone finally convinced them it's not good for us expansion to places like this ain't Texas. <laughs> they, cause baby, you thought, I mean, I think people have been forgiving of MSC because it always, you know, whenever something happens with MSC, like, the, oh, the food is bad or there's poor service, the excuse is always, oh, it's a European line. It's a European line. It's a European line. Well, they are actively telling us with that World American name and title that they want to be a part of the American market. So you're going to have to make some adjustments. Amelia. Hi, Amelia. I think that's a new name. It says love, love, love the Maravillion. It's okay. We look, we not to spell checkers around here. Um, so yes, I enjoyed Maravillia made me almost think that MSC was going to be better than Royal Caribbean for two seconds. That Maravillia, I love the outside, um, pool area. I mean, the adults only pool area. I love they had their, their nightclub on the outside. I got on Seascape expecting so much more because it was such a bigger ship and newer and all that kind of stuff. MSC Seascape was a big ship with no personality, baby. It was Ikea. Uh, Keisha H says, anxiety on high. No, no, no. Uh, folks had the same question. Uh, hey, Mel on the Move. Welcome in. Folks are speaking. Welcome. Welcome in, YFC. Um, <laughs> yeah, she walked into toenails in my cabin on Seascape. But I again, I am like, I was like, you know, I was like, okay, I got the crappy cabin. I'm willing to give it another try. Um, and of course, I am booked on World America. Um, and if MSC, if you're listening, I would love access to the previous sale and hit me up at COC at gmail.com. Uh, Edward Strand is saying that is a great point. See, once you said something, you give them time and go have another drink for sure. For sure. Even like my situation, you know, I had that moment on Carnival Sunshine, which it was funny. I love the Carnival Sunshine as a ship. Love that ship. But I had a bug. It was actually two bugs. Later, I found another one in my cabin. Thank God it was not bad bugs. They did an inspection. But, you know, like I had to keep the party going because I'm going to do frown for four days. Like, no. Um, Keisha H. Easy Selling says they have six hours to completely reset all cabins and people are sloppy. Leave tons of junk, fans, coolers, etc. Yeah. So give the crew some credit, give them some grace, but please communicate your, your situation. And also sometimes understand that the communication is going to be a lag in from when you call to when it's addressed. And honestly, sometimes the best moments are when they address a situation. And I'm not in my cabin, I'm outside having a drink um, and can come back to the situation being resolved. Uh, Keisha H says, not sign your life away. Yes, because I mean, you were the one who decided to get on this thing that was dangling across the side of the ship. They just created the fun. Um, Easy Seller says, will MSC be consistent in locking people into the swing or forget to lash grandmas? <laughs> Bye, Easy Seller. <laughs> First off, grandma ain't getting in the swing. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, but that's a good question. How accessible is said swing? I want to know, but honestly though, looking at those pictures and I feel like it's very strategic that all the pictures have ocean K in the background. Something tells me that swing won't be swinging unless it's an ocean key and you know, they can just drop one of those lifeboats and come get you. Uh, okay. So there is, do I have uh, one? Uh, we did the swing. There's a couple more things that I want to share with you because this ship and this is another thing that I want to caution MSC. Um, this ship, um, they rolled out their districts, right? 
And I'm not going to play the video because I seem like I might have been lagging a little bit. I don't know. Um, however, there was a video showing the MSC new districts. And my initial reaction was, this is Royal Caribbean. MSC, you don't have to be Royal Caribbean. Do your own thing with these zones, et cetera. However, we are excited to see the launch of these zones. So I'm going to get into this slide really quickly. Let's see. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if I can. I don't think those are shared. Let's see. Present. Oh, share screen. Share screen. This one. Share. Okay. And hopefully you all can see this. Can I make it a little bigger? How do I go in the presentation? Okay. So MSC also has released the, what they're calling. So Royal Caribbean calls it neighborhoods. MSC is calling it districts. Sounds familiar. MSC, this is your opportunity. Can you throw in some flares to make things different and not give us the Royal Caribbean experience? So, of course, they're going to maintain their yacht club. Yacht club seems like it's going to be pretty big, decks 19, 20, and 21. And, of course, this is your accelerated enhanced experience. Um, Uncle Eddie loves uh, selling yacht club, so I feel like I need to get into yacht club to try it out myself. Uh, on decks 18 and 19, they're going to have an aqua duck, uh, aqua deck, <laughs> um, not to be confused with Disney's aqua duck, where there's going to be sun and lounge spaces and upbeat music. So I can see me hanging out on the aqua deck. Um, I just hope that um, they really make a really immersive adults only area. Again, the seascapes adults only area was kind of plain vanilla with just a wading pool. Like, how can we sexy it up a little bit for the adults? Then, of course, there's going to be a family adventure in decks 19 and 20. There's going to be a zen area. So I can see me hanging out here. Oh, so this is where, where it's adults only exclusive oasis with panoramic ocean views. That sounds exciting. Promenade sounds very royal-esque. There's going to be a galleria, which has entertainment and drink spots and games. And then there's going to be terraces. Now, this seems interesting with avant-garde dining concepts, etc. So I'm going to stop sharing. What do you all think about those districts? Any district that you can see yourself hanging out in and welcome in 31 people. I'm going to get back into the comments. So this is where I think MSC needs to pause for the cause and make sure it doesn't go too Royal-esque. If I want to get on a Royal Caribbean ship, I'm going to get on a Royal Caribbean ship unless what they could manipulate is the price points. So you want to give us the Royal Caribbean feel without, like I was pricing a lore of the seas yesterday for a client. If you are looking for travel agent services, you can email, email me at cwc at gmail.com. More than helpful to give you a quote. I don't harass you. I don't bother you. Just want to make sure you can get out in these travel streets and happy to assist. Anywho, I was giving my client a Lord have mercy, uh, um, a quote on a lore of the seas for June. And yes, I know it's high season, but three day cruise interior cabin, $1,700. Okay. So, um, you know, if, if MSC's lane could be trying to give you that real experience with a cheaper price point entry point, um, and if they can bump up the service at least for a while to like win some brand loyalty, that might be how they can really make a mark in the U.S. Mark market. Amelia is saying, MSC makes you sign a waiver for you to use a treadmill. I didn't know that because I, I, I worked out when I was on Maryville. I did not work out when I was on uh, Hey Yellow, when I was on Seascape. Uh, and folks are speaking. What up, Brie Brizzle? Um, Amelia says, MSC doesn't care about the American market. It's not their bread and butter. Um, and yes, we know their bread and butter is container ships, shipping. Uh, it's so interesting. There's a park that I walk in and when time the train comes through the park, there's like, if there's a large train shipment, like 20 of those train cars are like MSC, uh, MSC, what is it called? Containers that are being hauled. Um, if you ever are in like a more industrial cruise port, a lot of times you'll see those big, like the container ship that hit, um, hit the bridge in Baltimore. There are a few MSC containers you can see from like those initial rescue pictures. Um, but then if this is the case, leave us the hell alone. Because don't say you don't put World America on the side of the ship and you're not going to give us something that reflects 
whatever the American value and standard is for, for service. So I, I feel like it was cute. If it was your pet project for cruising and you all want to stay, you know, your headquarters in other countries, that kind of thing. you want to say that we're a European brand, got it. But don't say that you're coming for the American market, slap world America on the side of a ship and you're not going to give us an American standard of service. That's not going to fly anymore. MSC, I feel like for this ship, that's just Carlene's humble opinion. Amelia, like, I get your point, though. They know, MSC knows it has money in the bank because they are a shipping company. Totally understand that. But in my head, I'm like, nobody asked for you to be a cruise company if you're just going to give us, you know, whatever your pet project leftover, you know, niblets of service are. Folks are speaking. Uh, and Parker's on the go says, let's see, I could turn this one off, remove from studio. Maybe I'll stop lagging. Uh, I told you they are coming for everyone. <laughs> yeah, they're coming, but MSC, if you're going to come, you got to come correct. Uh, Easy Selling says, MSC must care about us in that big US. To me, I'm guessing Easy Selling, uh, either you're saying the US or you are saying black and brown cruisers or cruisers who are minorities. And I totally agree. And it's been interesting because I've been sharing with my cruise community. So those creators that, you know, I call like kind of my inner circle of creators that I'm always bouncing ideas off of and talking about my frustrations as a creator. I sent them on IG about a week or so ago. MSC had a set of brown legs at Ocean K. And I was like, well, look at MSC. So, but I also say, don't just throw black and brown faces in the mix. Um, something that I touted celebrity for doing. Celebrity doesn't just give us a brown cruise director and says, yay, we gave you DEI. No, celebrity invests in black and brown artists. There's, um, um, when you walk throughout the ship, you know, to buy art is an invest in black and brown wealth. Um, there was a guy, Jesse Hamilton Jr. He does like a whole set. He almost has like a, a residency on celebrity. So don't just slap us on your materials and say, we check the box and this is going to bring black and brown cruisers. We are more sophisticated than that. We want to make sure that those service elements, are you being attentive? Because I remember on Maravilla, uh, when I've had to do the, I had to do the, the uh, is this the racism car? And that was, I was on the back deck on Maravilla in the adults only area. And I was just literally, it was to the point, I was doing like this, like trying to get someone to help me, like get, I had the drink package. And of course I got the drink package. I want the drinks. And I had even tipped the guy, $10, right? So I sat down in my chair and I was like, okay, if I give him this $10, like surely this is the cue of, hey, keep coming back, keep working my chair. I want you to keep serving me. Well, I tipped him the $10, you know, with the first drink. He hadn't even delivered my drink yet, which is probably a mistake on my end. But I was trying to signal like, hey, let's build a working relationship with these drinks. Um, homeboy delivered that one drink and never came back. So at one point I'm sitting in the back and I kept doing like this. There was a white gentleman who was in the smoking section and saw me like, I mean, I was the one that I got up and was doing this. Um, he did it. And the guy came over immediately to him. And he says, which is, this is what allyship means. If people who are watching, he says, no, don't help me help her. A shout out to that man. I thanked him then, but I just want to say thank you vibes to the universe for him for doing that for me. But that's the kind of thing. And I'm not going to just pick on MSC with this cruise line service industry, people in general, stop, uh, train your folks in a way that they realize and understand the history of what it means to be meant and still means to be black and brown in America. And sometimes make us feel like we don't even have to think about we are on vacation and we don't have to think about is, am I being treated differently because of the color of my skin or am I being treated differently just because you're having a bad day or am I being treated differently because maybe you just didn't actually see me. So there needs to be some sort of training, not just MSC, but across lines of awareness of this is what the experience of being black and brown in our country is. We used to not be able to go to certain places. We used to not get certain services. Hello, 30 people. Um, and, you know, maybe just be a little more attentive because, of, you know, just historical factors. Off that soapbox into the comments. Uncle Eddie says, um, suggest after this live, search MSC World Europa, the world America would be a carbon copy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the ship is going to be a carbon copy. I hope they can give us some American elements. Uh, wishful thinking, Uncle Eddie, I guess. 
uh, folks are speaking. Uh, Eddie is saying 1700 for three days. Hmm. Not for DMV residents. Actually, this is for a DMV resident, Uncle Eddie. She's taking, trying to take her daughter. Um, she's looking for a three-day cruise. I, I gave her two quotes. I gave her our carnival glory and uh, Royal Caribbean, the Lord of the Seas. Um, so we'll see how it shakes out. But I was just like, it was funny because my carnival quote was $1,200 balcony. Um, and for Royal, it was $1,700 interior. And I was just like, come on, Royal. Like, sheesh. Um, on the go says we are extra and bougie niblets, <laughs> bait and switch tactics. Yeah, don't bait and switch us by just throwing those, you know, little skin color on it. And you still want to treat us any kind of way. We want to see deep investments. Uh, Edward is saying, um, responding to easy selling. Miss Penny says, All right, Miss Penny with the with the Disney cruise line aft in her picture. She says, I still want to pass on MS. Okay, friends. Hold on. Sorry, they got the text in Jesus. Um, Miss Penny says, I will pass on MSC. Why is this jumping like this? Oh, here, let me just exit this out. Um, she says, I'm a believer, you get what you pay for. So the cheap prices don't move me. It just seems they are not genuine. Miss Penny said it. Uh, on the go, yellow is saying, wow, easy sell. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Um, unfortunately, shitty service is common for Black people universally, universally on all cruises. And I'm going to have to uh, some, agree with that sometimes. I, I mean, I've been on a few cruise lines where I'm like, I had the drink package. Why are you walking past me and then asking someone next to me, would you like a drink? Like, I'm thirsty just like they thirsty, you know? <laughs> so, uh, it, it, yeah, I, I, celebrity, I encountered that on a scent. And actually, it was funny because I had said it on my live and then things had got better the next day. I actually found a really good pool guy, uh, one of the servers at the pool, and he made up for it. But my first day on celebrity ascent, service wise, not like not service wise, drink wise. <laughs> let me let me condense <laughs> the levels of service. Drink wise, it was funny because like the servers were walking through the buffet doing their whole like, do you want the drink package? Do you want to drink? And I'm just sitting there like, oh, can I get somebody? And of course they're going to the tables, and I'm like, no, I can come to my table. I will also say where my table was because I wanted a window seat. I was right by the window, so maybe they weren't just walking, you know, doing the extra due diligence. They were just catching people on the sides by the aisle. Um, but even like on Carnival um, recently on the Sunshine. I was sitting out on the deck and like the waiter walks past me and then like two chairs down, he's like, drinks. And I'm like, drink package girl here, help me. <laughs> so we end up again, end up having a better situation. But again, it's kind of like, I would love for any service industry to master how would you make, how can you make us feel better given our circumstances uh, in the history, unfortunately, um, that we've had with service. And that's it. I, that's all. Um, Miss DD says I experienced that on NCL. So yeah, I mean it's it's unfortunate that we again pay our dollars despite cruise lines and have to think about these kind of things on vacations. I'm gonna try to let it go, but it's keeping a hold on me. Uh, Team Reese says yes, a not. Where I say when Jesse Hamilton Jr. So Jesse Ham Team Reese is talking about the headliner Jesse Hamilton Jr. who does a residency on Celebrity Cruise Line. And um, Jesse Hamilton Jr., first off, they are very deep family and music industry. Second off, he's a FAMU graduate. The intentionality behind showing HBCU culture just caught my eye. It was an amazing act. I mean, if I had tear ducts that day, they would have been overflowing because it, it just kind of overwhelmed me of like, dang, they're not just having us out here cha-cha sliding, that kind of thing. They are really like, I go around the corner and there's a piece of art that looks like me by an artist <laughs> that looks like me. That means something to me as an HBC grad to see somebody up on the stage, and you know, as an HBC grad too, like that means something to me. And that makes me be like, you know what? I'm coming back. And shoot, before I got off that ship, I had booked another celebrity cruise. Uh, Amelia Yellick says, that drink story was my experience as well on MSC. Carnival servers are very attentive regardless. I would say most carnival servers are attentive. Um, 
Sunshine was probably the only time that I was just like, this guy is, he seems to be. And I will also say, we have to be mindful of, sometimes it's not the cruise lines training, it's that people bring biases from their own countries. <laughs> and we're going to leave that one <laughs> alone. So, given all this, we're at the bottom of the chat. Um, and it, my lunch is about to be up in about four minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this coverage of MSC World America. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I know I'm planning on giving MSC um, a try, another try. Because if I don't get on another MSC cruise before then, uh, I do have a deposit on World America because I am interested in seeing what this American uh, flair is going to be to, or what the, what the American flair will be to um, cruising. Um, what other announcements? Let's do the announcements. Um, so yes, um, welcome in 31 people. You know, Eddie, I need to consider with this being my third try. Um, I need to consider Yacht Club. Um, I need to get on, I need to try Yacht Club as an agent. I need to try Yacht Club too. Um, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, oh, I'm happy these chats help you get your day by. But yeah, announcements. So there is for my channel members who are tuned in. We have a live members only um, Zoom meeting chat kickback on Monday, April 15th. If you are not a channel member, no worries. I have a trip announcement coming up, which is a Monday meetup. If you all know, I don't go live um, on a weekly basis. I only go live whenever one, we have big ship announcements like this that I'm noticing from MSC, these big rollouts or whenever I'm about to go uh, travel. And on Monday, April 22nd, there'll be a Monday meetup, which means there'll be a trip announcement. So tune in Monday, April 22nd at 8 p.m. All right, this is CWC. Thanks for having lunch with me. Make sure you like, hit that comment. Leave a comment on, tell me in the chat, not in this chat, but tell me on the comment in the video once the video uploads. Will you be considering World America? MSC, if you are listening and you want a solo cruiser of a certain age, um, Hit me up. I'm more than willing to uh, come and preview your ship. Um, and what else? Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.